I never know how to start these, so I'm just going to start. I wanted to make a quick video showing you something that I've been working on. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I make a lot of Anki flashcards. You also know that I don't like making Anki flashcards, which is why for the most part, I try and use Python automations to automate the entire process of creating the flashcards from extracting text from a textbook to getting the images, generating HTML links, generating the closed deletions, all of the parts of making the flashcard, I try and automate using Python scripts. But that method really only works well for certain types of books, things that have a certain structure that are easy to target the specific text and images that you're trying to get. When I'm studying a textbook that is a more traditional style, it's harder for me to use Python automations because the textbook is not as standardized, the formatting can be really different, um, and it's just, it's just a little bit more difficult to do. So in those situations, I prefer to use something like a custom GPT to be able to target the text that I think is important and generate flashcards from that text, and then take those flashcards that the custom GPT makes, paste them into an Excel spreadsheet, and then from there, upload them into Anki. And this has been working pretty well, but there's a problem with this method, and that is that I need a lot of images in my flashcards. And when I make flashcards using a custom GPT, and then I still have to go back into Anki once I've made the flashcards, and then manually add the images that I want um, one by one into the flashcards that I need to have images. And that is simply too much work. So I needed to figure out a way to be able to streamline the process of getting images into my flashcards. And something that I have been doing with my Python automation is I create HTML links to be able to link to the images um, in the flashcards. And that way I don't have to manually add any images at all. I've made other videos kind of showing how HTML links work, but I have not figured out a way uh, to incorporate them into this ChatGPT method until now. So what I've done is I've created a simple Python app. Um, it's this little wizard man here. So I call that the flashcard wizard, and it works synergistically with an Excel spreadsheet, which I created specifically for making flashcards with something like a custom GPT. You could also use this to manually make flashcards if that's something you're into. And the Excel spreadsheet is called Excelsior because it's, uh, it's fun. And this is what it looks like. Um, so you've got basically three columns here. The first column is what's going to be on the front of your flashcard. So I like to make a lot of closed deletion flashcards. So my closed deletion will go in this front column here. And then any extra information that I want kind of on the back of the flashcard, I'll put in the back column. And then all of my images are going to be in the images column. And so when I import this CSV file into Anki, I'll just have to map these fields to um, the appropriate columns. So I have a front field, a back field, and an images field which I'll just match to these columns. And basically the way this works is as I add the flashcards from ChatGPT, I can also add the images by simply taking a screenshot of whichever image I think needs to go with this flashcard. And then the app will communicate with the Excel spreadsheet and it will generate a link to that specific image. The app is just watching my clipboard and anytime I take a screenshot, it's going to make a copy of that image and save it to a specific folder. And then it's going to send the name of that image to this Excel spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet has a bunch of macros uh, kind of working in the background that will generate the HTML link in the markup that Anki uses. Let me show you an example of kind of how this works. So this is the basic setup that I use when I'm using my custom GPT. Um, and then I'll grab some text from my textbook here. I'm just gonna do this kind of quickly as a demonstration. So it's gonna give me the flashcards. And normally I'm a little bit uh, picky about which flashcards I use, but for this demonstration, I'm just gonna grab whatever it gives me here. And then I just paste them into the Excel spreadsheet. And then let's pull up my book again here. So let's say that for this flashcard, I want this image in the flashcard. All I have to do is come up here to this Excelsior tab, which I added, and then there are multiple modes for images. So if I select single mode, what that's gonna do is it's gonna generate a single HTML link for every screenshot that I take. If I select multiple mode, that's going to add more than one HTML link to a specific flashcard. 
So if I wanted more than one image in a flashcard, I would just select multiple mode and I'd be able to keep adding images to that flashcard indefinitely. But let's just say that I want one image. So I'm gonna select single mode. I'm gonna go to my app and I'm going to select run. So now this app is running. The little wizard man is watching my clipboard. And so if I take a screenshot here, then it's going to save that to my clipboard and an HTML link is generated to this image. And so I can move to the next flashcard and let's say I want all four of these images in this flashcard. All I would do is come up here to the multiple mode and then take four screenshots. And we can see that I have four HTML links generated. One, two, three, four, yeah, okay, yeah, four. So we can see that I have four HTML links that were generated for this flashcard. Um, I can switch it back to single mode and keep going, kind of rinse and repeat, grabbing flashcards, uh, grabbing images for my flashcards as I go. All right, so now I've got 25 flashcards here, um, all with a bunch of images that I gathered kind of as I was creating these flashcards. Um, so now all I'd have to do is export this file or save this file as a CSV UTF-8 file that I can then upload directly into Anki. And when I do that, I should have flashcards that have images already in them, hopefully. So let's do that. Let's go file, save as, and I want CSV UTF-8 comma delimited. And we'll just save this to the desktop here. Okay, so now let's pull up my Anki. And then if I drag this file into Anki, it's gonna pull up the flashcard import kind of interface here. Change this to comma. And then I should be able to see my fields here. So this is the front field, back field, and images. This is kind of carried over from the Excel spreadsheet. It's not gonna affect anything, it doesn't matter. Now I need to select the note type that I wanna use. And for this, I have a specific note type that I use and it's the Excelsior close. And then down here, this is just where you do the field mapping. So this is to make sure that the front column is going to the front field. So like here, I've got my back matched up with my images field. I need to switch that to images and switch this one to back. And that's it. Now I hit import. So now I've got 25 new flashcards here and I can examine them by clicking show. So now we can see I've got my flashcard and I've got my image and I've got the back extra field. Right now I just have this little icon because I still need to move my images from the temporary folder into the collection.media folder. And the way I do that is I just pull up this little flashcard wizard man again and I select move images. It tells me that my images are moved successfully that's fantastic. So what that does is it just takes the images, moves them to the collection.media folder so you don't have to mess around with it. If I hit, I can hit stop now because I'm not making any more flashcards. So now if I refresh this and go into the deck, now I've got flashcards that have images in them. So that's just what I wanted to show you. Um, if you think that that's something you would be interested in, let me know. I've sent this app to a couple of different people and I keep running into the issue where it thinks that I'm trying to give them a virus, which makes sense. It's just a simple Python script, but it kind of looks like a virus. <laughs> it's watching your files and sending information. Um, so it's, it's understandable. But because of that, I think sharing this app broadly might be a little bit difficult at this point. There is a way around that, but you should not accept weird apps from strangers on the internet as a general rule. So if there's enough interest in this, I will figure out a way to be able to share this so that people can use it. One idea I had is maybe integrating it into Anki as an add-on to give it the same kind of functionality, but just have it be an add-on within Anki that kind of runs in the background. So that's one idea. 
I could also just, you know, make it look less suspicious, <laughs> but that might take some time, uh, time that I don't really want to spend if nobody's interested. So if you want this app, if you think that this would be helpful to you, um, let me know and I'll figure it out. All right, that's it. See, now I don't know how to end these either. <laughs>